Next on News 4 Tucson at 10, the search is on for two children taken from DPS. Authorities now asking for your help. Plus, state authorities launch an investigation over claims of an employee of a local cancer center has been stealing opioids that are meant for patients. Plus, we're just praying that God has him safe and um, brings him home soon. A family's desperate search nearly two months after her son went missing, a mother pleading for help to bring him home. News 4 Tucson Live at 10 begins right now. Investigating for you. This is News 4 Tucson Live at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. A mother makes a desperate plea for information about the whereabouts of her son. 16 year old Joshua Anderson has been missing for nearly two months. Sheriff's detectives say he may possibly be with some dangerous people. News 4 Tucson for Pete Mario spoke exclusively with his mother in tonight's Crime Trackers report. It's just it's like a nightmare that you want to wake up in the morning and it just isn't real. Heidi Anderson lives in Maryland and says Josh is blessed to have two sets of parents. She raised him from age four to 13. He's an awesome kid. He's very smart. <laughs> um, he's a teenager, of course, so you know how teenagers can be, but he's very intelligent. Josh moved to Three Points to live with his other parents when he was 13. It was on May 31st when they called the Pima County Sheriff's Department. Last time they heard from him was uh, May 28th of 2019. He had expressed that he was in uh, danger, uh, that he was uh, out in the desert without water. Friends and family came out to this area outside of Three Points to search for Josh. It's located off of Highway 286 between milepost 28 and 22. We used uh, several different assets, air and ground uh, searches to try and locate Joshua. Uh, however, we were un unsuccessful in doing so. Detectives say the 16-year-old was on juvenile intensive probation. He left, never to be seen again, after returning from a meeting at the juvenile court center. It appears that he is uh, with some da possibly dangerous people. That's extremely concerning to the family. Heidi says when she last spoke to him, all he talked about... His son, he has a beautiful baby who actually just recently started walking. For Heidi, she holds precious memories and pictures of his childhood. He's an amazing baseball player. He's just incredible to watch. He just lights up on that field. <laughs> kind of like how his face lights up when he's holding his son. She has a message for Josh and those who may have information about him. Please just let us know that he's okay. Um, Ty, baby, we love you. You have two sets of parents that love you so much, and we miss you. And if you have information on Joshua Anderson, call 911 or 88 Crime if you want to remain anonymous. Lupita Murillo, News for Tucson. Developing out of Florence tonight, an Amber Alert has been issued for two children. The Arizona Department of Public Safety says two-year-old Blaze Kirkley and five-month-old Ryder Kirkley were taken from DCS custody this morning. Their parents, Melissa Joy Gladden and Jerry J. Kirkley, are suspected of taking them. DPS says the parents are known drug users and have a history of domestic violence. They say the father is also known to carry weapons. Officials believe they are driving a gold 2008 Dodge pickup truck with a Louisiana license plate. The plate number is on your screen right now. Officials say they may be headed to Mississippi or Louisiana. If you see them or have any information, you are asked to call 911. State authorities have launched an investigation over claims that an employee of a local cancer center has been stealing opioids meant for patients. Details tonight in our News 4 Tucson Investigators Report. According to court documents, law enforcement has made contact with four victims of what they are calling a prescription narcotics fraud scheme. The crimes are said to have occurred between March of this year up until last month. Investigators say the suspect was working at Banner Health Cancer Center. As part of the scheme, authorities say the suspect would pose as a pharmacy employee. They would then contact patients and tell them their medication is expired or it's being recalled. Then the suspect would show up to the patient's homes and collect the drugs, including Oxycontin and morphine. Special agents from the state attorney general's office also served a search warrant at a west side townhouse. The News 4 Tucson investigators went to the suspect's home, but no one responded. 
Later, a man claiming to be calling on behalf of his neighbor asked why I left my business card on the door, but he said he didn't know the suspect. At this point, authorities will not say if they've made an arrest in the case, but Banner Health confirms the employee is no longer with the company. In a statement, they told us, quote, we are unable to comment on pending personnel or law enforcement actions. However, we at Banner Health take prescription drug fraud very seriously. We work closely with the Attorney General and Arizona law enforcement agencies and applaud their vigorous efforts to protect our communities. And the News 4 Tucson investigators will continue to follow developments in this case. If you have something you'd like us to look into, email us at investigators at kvoa.com or you can call the News 4 Tucson investigators tip line at 955-4444. New at 10, John Paul Stevens, who served on the Supreme Court for nearly 35 years, has died at the age of 99. Justice, Justice John Paul Stevens was one of the Supreme Court's leading liberals during his time on the bench. Justice Stevens was known for his signature bow tie, as he was with his clearly written opinions. He supported limits on police powers and favored free speech, but ruled against prayer in schools. Justice Stevens retired at the age of 90. He was the third longest serving justice in Supreme Court history. Oro Valley Police have identified the victim of a fatal collision Saturday night. Authorities say 19-year-old Maya Smith Dolana had just left a babysitting job and was driving her Toyota Prius on Moore Road. Dolana crossed onto oncoming traffic and collided with the truck. Authorities don't know what caused her to leave her lane of traffic. Pima County is planning to spend more than half a million dollars in federal funding to provide humanitarian aid for migrants seeking asylum. A letter from Pima County Administrator Chuck Huckleberry details how that money will be used. The county is requesting additional funds through Operation Stone Garden. In response to the county transforming a part of the juvenile justice complex into a temporary migrant shelter, Huckleberry says it takes more than $100 a day to take care of each migrant. The Pima County Board of Supervisors will hold a special board meeting on Monday to decide whether to allow Catholic Community Services to use a portion of the complex as a shelter for asylum seekers. Catholic Community Services will hold a discussion on temporary housing tomorrow. And immigration advocates are suing the Trump administration over its move to end asylum protection for most migrants who cross the southern border. The American Civil Liberties Union is just one organization that filed suit in a Northern California federal court. The administration proposal would prevent most migrants from seeking asylum if they have passed through another country first and did not seek asylum in that country. Immigrant advocates say the plan is illegal because it goes around the process Congress has already established for asylum. The battle between the president and four freshman congresswomen of color known as the squad reached the House floor. The House approving a symbolic resolution which says, quote, strongly condemns President Donald Trump's racist comments that have legitimized and increased fear and hatred of new Americans and people of color. All this after President Trump tweeted Sunday that the four Democratic congresswomen go back to their countries, their home countries, all but one who were born in the U.S. They can leave, they can stay, but they should love our country and they should work for the good of our country. Senate Leader Mitch McConnell said the president's not a racist, but suggested all sides need to turn the volume down while the Democrats remain united on this issue. Representative Ann Kirkpatrick has called to open an impeachment inquiry against President Trump. The Tucson Democrats stood on the floor of the House of Representatives and said she felt that President Trump had become openly defiant, leaving no other option. After speaking with legal scholars and experts, reviewing the Mueller report, and after seeing administration officials defy congressional subpoenas, I've come to the conclusion that the House of Representatives must open an impeachment inquiry on President Donald Trump. President Trump has not responded to her comments. All right, we say uh, roll over to the record heap. Uh, we got to kind of lead with that. We did hit 110 degrees here in the city of Tucson today, tying the record of 110 set back in the 90s. 115 crazy kind of heat out in Phoenix. Hila Bend today, 113 in Yuma. But 
Well, as I said, roll over. We're talking about storm season now. Uh, looks like things are quieting down. Didn't have too much action, at least in the city of Tucson today. We did across sections of Santa Cruz and Cochise County, but high pressure setting up in a more favorable position. Remember those arrows kind of funnel clockwise that transports moisture in from West Texas, northern Mexico this way. And check out our dew points. Uh, they're starting to surge from the south. We're getting what's called a gulf surge. This could help trigger some showers and thunderstorms tomorrow. In fact, our monsoon prediction in Index for the city of Tucson, 4 out of 10 tomorrow and 7 out of 10 Sierra Vista, 6 out of 10 Nogales. So we are expecting much more widespread showers and thunderstorms in the forecast tomorrow. We'll time it all out for you when I see you back here in just a few minutes. All right, Matt, thank you. Two Mexican fishermen injured at sea were rescued by airmen from Davis Mountain Air Force Base. The U.S. Air Force says those two airmen parachuted into the Pacific Ocean July 10th. They did that to give medical aid to the fishermen who were hurt when their boat's crane collapsed. The airmen reportedly stayed with those fishermen for two days until their boat reached Socorro Island, which is nearly 400 miles west of Puerto Vallarta. It's, it's a very gratifying uh, mission. I mean, I'm sure it's even, even more so for them when their feet dry on a ship versus us uh, from a couple hundred feet up watching. But um, at that point, we know we did our job, you know, getting them in the right location to where we're trying to drop them so they can make it to the boats to make it to the ships. And it, it's, it's a team effort. So uh, all around, you know, when you, when you see a success like that, you know your, your training actually paid off. Officials say the two fishermen were injured. Uh, when they were injured, they were 1,300 miles away from San Diego. Those men are now receiving treatment in Mexico. Our News 4 Tucson Lifesaver campaign is starting to wind down for the season. Once again, though, we are teaming up with community partners, teaching your little ones the ABCs of water safety. There are only two Swim Fest events left this year, so you're going to want to sign up as soon as possible. Our next event will be Thursday, July 25th. That will be at the Northwest YMCA. Your children can still participate in our coloring contest for a chance to win tickets to Legoland. And don't forget, now's a great time to sign up for our pool fence giveaway. All the details on our website, kvoa.com. All right, straight ahead on News 4 Tucson at 10, a moment in history. 50 years later, we are still celebrating one major milestone. Plus, what are the valley fever symptoms you really need to look out for? Keep it right here. News 4 Tucson at 10 is coming right back. Investigating for you. This is News 4 Tucson. I was. John Overall. Angelique Lazardi. Sports Director Paul Sicala and Chief Meteorologist Matt Bro. This is News 4 Tucson, live at 10. Listen, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Well, it's hard to believe, but today marks 50 years since the launch of Apollo 11, a mission that carried men to the surface of the moon for the first time. Yes, it's a moment that changed the course of history. NBC's Jay Gray has a closer look at how people are remembering the historic day. 50 years ago this week, Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins hurtled through the unforgiving blackness of space. Astronaut Michael Collins returning to pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center a half century after his historic launch. I always think of a, a flight to the moon as being a, a long and fragile daisy chain of events. A delicate journey into the great unknown, driven by global competition, national pride, and the unwavering work of 400,000 men and women committed to the fledgling space program. At a time when the country was dealing with the war in Vietnam and the civil unrest surrounding that, racial division, and the Cold War with Russia, the space mission, gave Americans a reason to unite. And this golden anniversary is bringing people together again at Kennedy Space Center, at the Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama, where 5,000 model rockets were launched at the exact time Apollo 11 left Earth 50 years ago, and at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, as Neil Armstrong's spacesuit from the mission is unveiled. It took engineers, manufacturers, and technicians more than 10 years to design the the 21 layers of fabric, rubber, metal, and fiber glass. Dedication that changed the course of mankind. Expanded humanity's understanding of our celestial neighbor. And most importantly, it taught us something about ourselves. From a perspective the world had never seen before. Jay Gray, NBC News. 
With more than 5,000 cases reported so far this year, Valley fever is on the rise in Arizona. The fungal infection mostly found in Arizona is caused by inhaling spores that live in the ground. Symptoms include chest pain and fatigue, and doctors say if you have pneumonia, you'll also want to get tested for the disease. Now that's a tip off because one out of three people who get a diagnosis of pneumonia in Tucson uh, actually have it caused by a fungus, not by a bacteria or a virus. And so those patients should definitely be tested. New legislation from Arizona and California congressional representatives and known as the Forward Act is aiming to bring more national attention to Valley Fever and the push for a vaccine. When temperatures reach up to 102 degrees or higher, the Salvation Army's Operation Chill Out kicks into full swing. Volunteers have been handing out water and heat relief items to homeless people at De Anza Park and Santa Rita Park. And so far this summer, they've already given out nearly 11,200 bottles of water. But they still need help collecting donation items, and you can help out by dropping off items at the Salvation Army Hospitality House or any Naughton's Plumbing location. Workers will be distributing these supplies through August 31st. Certainly needed today, that Boy. is for sure. Storm alert now, you notice, is at low. We did have it as high as moderate today. Some minor flooding across Santa Cruz County. All good signs that monsoon moisture may be headed to the north a little bit. Usually it starts down in Cochise, Santa Cruz County, and it kind of filters this way. Yeah. But yeah, that heat, that's what was up today. As we mentioned, 110, let's just put it right there. The hottest temperature we've seen so far this 2019. And let's just hope that's the hottest we will see for the remainder of this 2019, just about halfway through the year. Outside, 10 o'clock at night, ouch, it's still stifling. It's 95 degrees. The sun has been set for now three hours. Here's one thing that makes it feel a little bit more uncomfortable. That dew point's at 53, but Remember, we like dew points into the mid 50s to get storms fired up and well, here they are on the increase. 89 Midtown, a little bit more acceptable, right? 94 Oro Valley, it's 84 Sabino Canyon. East Siders a little bit cooler. You were the beneficiaries of some isolated showers today, even a couple rumbles of thunder. Check out Sonoida, 69 degrees in Sonoida. It is 102 degrees up in Phoenix, so some cursory math. Try to do this in my head. I think that's a 33 degree temperature difference. Live Doppler, quiet on this Tuesday night. Let's see where our nearest storms are. Good complex of storms uh, just in northern sections of Sonora, northeast of Hermosillo. But that is uh, some moisture that we're going to watch over the course of the next couple of days. And what helps drive that moisture in? Well, this big area of high pressure, because remember, those arrows kind of go clockwise around that area of high pressure, helps steer that moisture in. And as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, those dew points are really up. Those deep greens really to our south indicate, well, dew points likely into the mid upper 50s and portions of Mexico probably even into the low 60s. So what do the computer tools have to say? This is tonight at 10 o'clock. Really not much happening unless you're in the state of New Mexico. We'll pause this tomorrow morning at 3. Actually, we'll go past the morning. This is 3 p.m. Already seeing widely scattered showers and thunderstorms across Cochise County. Eastern Pima County is dry. Look at this, though. This is 6 o'clock. We got heavy, possibly strong, severe storms near Nogales. Now, once again, this is just a model projection. This will update. If this goes a little bit farther to the north, we're pretty close to seeing some widely scattered storms right here in the city of Tucson. So tomorrow could be the day. That's why the monsoon prediction index is on four. Moderate chance of hail, flooding, high chance of wind with some wet microbursts and moderate dust as well. All right, forecast on for tonight. Sticky one, 80, 40% chance of storms tomorrow, 103 for the high temp. We'll see daytime highs into the 90s for Cochise and Santa Cruz County. Our best storm chance really so far this monsoon happens tomorrow at 40%, down to 20% Thursday, Friday, 10% Saturday. We'll crank it back up to 20 to 30% chance Sunday and beyond with uh, daytime highs at least falling back to the upper 90s. Granted, it's not going to be that dry heat, but that dry heat today didn't feel so good to me anyway. No, <laughs> Too hot. 110 yeah. hot. Yeah. All right. Coming up, Frontier Airlines adding a few new flights. We have the details when we come back. We're going to do what we do 15 for three months, right? Tomorrow at 10. News for Tucson investigators. Uncover the evidence you have not seen.
A former Wildcat assistant basketball coach is caught on camera accepting a bribe, and we have the video. Just how deep does this scandal surrounding U of A men's basketball program go? Investigating for you, the FBI tapes, tomorrow at 10. Comments, plumbing, heating and air. If you got a problem, we'll be there. Are your water bills high? Do you have any signs of leakage? Cummings Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling offers electronic leak detection to avoid costly damage to your home. Call Cummings Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling today for your free estimate. 293-6900 or visit CummingsPlumbing.com. For heating, air, and plumbing, call Cummings. Come and enter now. Anyone hoping for a cheap getaway could be on luck. Frontier Airlines is now offering direct flights from Phoenix to four different cities with costs starting at $29. The low fare carrier announced a new direct flights to Detroit, Fargo, North Dakota, San Diego and Salt Lake City. Service to these cities began in November, but now is the time to book. A link to do just that can be found on our website at kvoa.com. All right, it's time for sports with John Overall. That's right, Paul Scala taking another night off. But coming up in sports, a trio of stars from the Grand Canyon State swinging for the fences in Philadelphia. That's not the right video, but we do have the highlights coming up next. The Office is on Cozy TV. Michael! Jim Halpert. Dwight Schrute. Pam! Kelly Kapoor. Toby. Angela. Tuna. Great breath. The Office. Weeknights on Cozy TV. By age 50, more than half of us will suffer. Bloodandcancerspecialists.com are you a master of the monsoon? If you are one of the first to guess how many inches of rain we receive during this time, there will be a big prize in your future from Cummings Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Enter now, and you could be named Monsoon Master. Children's Museum Tucson, where imagination and learning connect. You can help a child succeed this school year. Join Assistance League of Tucson and their community partners to get school supplies in the hands of children in need. Assistance League of Tucson will distribute supplies to their children's program. Donate new backpacks and school supplies for ages 5 through 18 at Assistance League of Tucson and both J.C. Penney locations through July 24th. Donated supplies will benefit Assistance League of Tucson and Southern Arizona Children's Advocacy Center. Make a difference. Help a child start the school year with pride and confidence. Tonight, Fallon has Chance the Rapper with a big reveal for his new album. And playing Box of Lies. I tell the truth! Oh my God! Plus, David Crosby and Cameron Crowe and a surprise call with Jennifer Lopez. New Fallon. Arizona, well represented in Philadelphia tonight. Three kids from the Grand Canyon State played in tonight's game between the Phillies and the Dodgers. And for the second night in a row, that guy, Scott Kingery, a walk-on at the U of A, opened up scoring with a home run. His 13th home run of the year. Phillies up one zip early. And balls were really flying out of the park tonight. Max Muncy here tying things up for the Dodgers with a monster blast to deep right field. That's his 25th on the year. Scores tied at 1-1. Alex Verdugo from Saguaro High School here in Tucson. Having a great season for the Dodgers, but his bat was ice cold tonight. He goes 0 for 4. Top of the fourth now. Phillies on top, 6-1. The hottest man in baseball is Cody Bellinger. He's from Hamilton High School up in Chandler, and he ripped his league-leading 34th home run of the season. Phillies did hang on to beat the Dodgers tonight, 9-8. On Thursday, Tiger Woods resumes his quest for 18. That's how many major titles Tiger needs to tie Jack Nicklaus, and Tiger's only three shy of that lofty goal right now. For the first time since 1951, the Open Championship will be played at Royal Portrush in Northern Ireland. Tiger and the best golfers in the world looking to claim one of the sport's most iconic prizes, the Claret Jug. Tiger has won this tournament three times, not since 2006, and right now he knows the man to beat is Brooks Kepka who has won four of the last 10 major championships. I mean, what he's done in the last what, four major championships and um, has been just, just unbelievable. He'd be so consistent, so so solid, so um, he's been in, in contention to win you know, each and every major championship. And I said, hey, dude, you don't you mind if I, you know, tag along and play a practice round? 
I've heard nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kepka may have been too busy preparing for this tournament to get back to Tiger. Not only has he won four of the last ten majors, but just last month he was going for his third straight U.S. Open. He ended up finishing second. All the players now know Brooks plays his best golf during the majors, but he says he doesn't really get the credit he deserves from the fans, sponsors, or the media. I'm over that. I'm over um, trying to get the recognition. Um, Listen, you either like me or you don't. I mean, that's just, that's life in general. It's not, um, it's not anything I'm too concerned about at this moment. I'm, I'm literally just focused on golf. And in football news tonight, South Point Catholic High School star safety, Lathan Ransom celebrated his birthday today by announcing on Twitter that he's gonna play for the Ohio State Buckeyes this fall. The 6'2", 200 pound senior posted a video on Twitter. It's titled, The Marathon Continues. Notre Dame and Texas were also in the running to land the hard hitting defensive back, but the Buckeyes caught his eye and captured his heart. The next level, I wanna represent many things. I wanna represent my family, friends, coaches, and my city. And for the next four years, I would like to represent the Ohio State Buckeyes. Go Bucks. And with that announcement, we have to wonder if Ransom's Sal Point teammate, Bajan Robinson, will join Ransom in Columbus, Ohio. Robinson has narrowed his list of potential schools to Texas, USC, and Ohio State. Robinson and Ransom have played together most of their lives, so it's easy to think there's a good chance Robinson will want to keep that relationship going at Ohio State. Robinson will make his announcement August 2nd, and we'll keep you posted. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Maybe you should see a shrink. How's it going there, Barry? <laughs> Every night. Watch it with me one more time. You know, Ross, I think I'm getting a knack for doing these promos. Cozy up with Frasier. Weekdays starting at 4. It's cool. Inside the RV Super Show at the Pima County Fairgrounds. Enjoy air-conditioned savings on a huge selection of new and used RVs. Top brands. Massive discounts. Free admission and parking. Come inside to save during the RV Super Show at the Pima County Fairgrounds in Tucson starting Thursday. Infinity of Tucson invites you to get behind the wheel of a fine luxury automobile. For only $2.99 a month, you'll make a bold statement with this powerful V6 twin turbo 300 horsepower engine. It moves you literally and figuratively, making it easy to to love when power and technology work together harmoniously you're able to perform at another level enjoy true powerful luxury from infinity from 299 a month visit infinity of tucson located at 625 west auto mall drive it's cool inside the rv super show at the pima county fairgrounds enjoy air conditioned savings on a huge selection of new and used rvs top brands massive discounts free admission and parking come inside to save during the rv super show at the pima county fairgrounds in tucson starting thursday well we can sort of say adios to that real intense heat that we saw today after a day characterized by 110 here in tucson a uh, 40 percent chance of storms tomorrow. I think really the epicenter will likely be in Cochise and Santa Cruz County. But if they get numerous easily, those could move into eastern sections of Pima County. I think if that were to occur, it would happen later on in the daytime hours. Can't rule out some strong to potentially severe storms with these. Uh, 100 on Thursday, 20 percent chance of storms, 20 percent also on Friday. Maybe a down day on Saturday, and then we'll up those chances again to 20 to 30 percent Sunday and beyond. Notice those temperatures do come down from that 110 we saw today. Just too darn hot for much of us. <laughs> and now, hopefully, it'll start cooling down a bit. Have a wonderful night. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. News 4 Tucson and our caring community partners are all teaming up to get Southern Arizona kids ready for the upcoming school year with the News 4 Tucson School Supply Drive. Drop off supplies at any Tucson area fire station or any of our sponsor locations. All supplies collected in each school district are going to stay in that school district to help each student. Join us in helping all students in Southern Arizona kick off the school year the right way. The News 4 Tucson School Supply Drive and get more information online at kvoa.com backslash supply drive. There's a lot of things I love about the morning show. I love the fact that we're the first people that folks here in Tucson see in the morning to get their news. And they want to know what the latest is. A lot of news happens overnight uh, that we get to deliver to them, and we try and get it right every time. We give you traffic and weather four times an hour, but the Mooneyisms are endless. What you see is real, even the mistakes. <laughs> if it didn't work, I think people could tell. It just works. 
Get up to the minute. The minute you wake up with Alex, Sean, and Team Tucson today. Kid Peak National Observatory committed to.